let's go ahead and get this air intake off of here. There we are. Every time you disconnect an electrical connector, inspect it. If you see any funny colors, it's corrosion and it needs to be dealt with. This looks good, so we'll set it aside. Now we're going to disconnect the throttle body right here. Disconnect this clip. Lift up on this. Get under there. There we are. Okay. Now we're going to remove this clamp right here. Slide it right up the hose. Set this aside. Let's get this off of here as well. That gives us plenty of slack. Remove this. Now behind here, we're going to remove this bolt right there and the other one right there. Now that we have those bolts off, let's continue on to removing the bolts that hold the EGR valve to this area here. Keep in mind that there is going to be a gasket that's located in between the two. Typically, it's a good idea to go ahead and replace it. There we are. Now that we have this broken free, let's continue on to removing this up here. It's a little clamp. Now we're just going to follow this down to where it connects on. You're going to find two little tabs. Essentially, you just want to kind of press that in and then press it out and away from the line. Lift this up. Set that aside. Now we're going to remove this wiring harness right here. There's a little tab. Other line right here is actually a fuel line, and we're not going to bother opening that up. Grab onto this clamp. There, remove this hose from the intake. Push that hose right off of there. Now right down behind this area here, you're gonna find a little clippy do. We wanna just pop that off the intake. Pull that out of there. Now we can come up along the back side of the intake. We'll disconnect this. Let's get this off of the back of the intake here. Now that we have everything disconnected from the intake, let's go ahead and start removing it from the engine itself. You're going to find some mounting bolts. There's one up here, and then a few that come down along like this. Remove them all. Now the next thing we need to do is go ahead and remove the battery right here. That's going to give us access to the bracket that's located under this area. Start with the negative, then the positive, and then of course the hold down. Now looking down under this area, you can see one of the mounting bolts for the bracket. This is a bracket that holds the intake to, of course, the engine, so we're going to need to remove both of these bolts. There's one here, and there's one located over there where you really can't see very easily. There's one. Get to the second one, just go ahead and get this wiring off of the bracket. Whew. There's the second one. Now we can carefully lift up on this. When we do this, we want to be very careful not to damage our fuel line here. And you also want to be very careful not to drop anything inside of your engine intake area. Get the 
this right out of the way. All right, so we got the intake off of there and we made sure we covered this up. The process continuing on is going to be pretty much the same whether you're doing the front valve cover or the rear. You might find that you have different areas where hoses go onto or even the clips. And especially in the front here, you're going to have a dipstick tube in the way. We're going to do the front because it's easier to see. Now we're going to remove this right here. Just go ahead and grab on that gray tab, slide it away, and then remove that. Moving along, we're going to disconnect all of our coils. Remove the coils. Let's start disconnecting the wiring to the VVT right here. Let's set that aside. Take this off down here. Let's go ahead and pop this off of there. Remove your dipstick. Let's get this one off of there too. Now that we have that off of there, let's continue on over here. Remove this one. And this is just going to give us a little bit more slack. Get this out of the way. Let's move along to removing these down here as well. Now at this point we can start removing all of our valve cover bolts. these bolts. Just keep in mind that all the bolts coming along the bottom here have the stud. Grab these center bolts as well. One. The other's right in there. And we can break this free. Now the next thing we want to do is remove the mounting bolt that holds the dipstick to the engine. We want to just have a little bit of space so we can get this valve cover up and out of here. If you were to look down along the front side of the engine here, you can see right where the stud is that holds the dipstick tube to the engine. And we can carefully lift up on this and slowly remove it from the car. With the valve cover out of the way, we have a nice clear view of our VVT solenoid. Now the one for the front bank is of course right here. The one on the back side is going to be located on the same side right there. To remove the VVT solenoid, we're just going to remove our two mounting bolts. Make sure you don't drop that into the engine. All right, now we can just carefully give this a wiggle and we're going to break it free from the engine. Now we can clean up the area where the VVT solenoid was located. Okay friends, now it's time to install our brand new VVT solenoid. Let's go ahead and carefully slide this down. When we slide it down, we want to make sure that this pin right here lines up with its corresponding hole. Start in both of your bolts, snug them up, and then torque them to 89 inch-pounds. The next thing we're going to do is clean up the area where the valve cover gasket's going to ride. You have this area that comes along here, which is the outer aspect. And then, of course, you have the center aspect, which is where the tube seals are. You're going to notice one of ours is still stuck on here. Let's go ahead and remove that. Something to think about when you're cleaning this is there's going to be areas that have gasket maker on it or RTV. You want to keep in mind that that needs to have RTV on it when you go ahead and put the new gasket on there. When we scrape this, let's try to scrape it so everything goes out of the engine and not in. Now that we clean that off, you can see exactly why you have to have gasket maker on there. There's a little joint right here and you want to make sure that that's completely sealed up when you put this back together. Okay, so once you have the entire area where your valve cover is going to be sitting, including your tube seal area, you want to make sure that you go ahead and move along to cleaning up that valve cover as well. Now over at the bench, we can start taking our valve cover gasket out of the valve cover. Just carefully slide under it and then go ahead and remove it. 
After you have your valve cover off of there, we're going to continue cleaning up the areas that look like they still have gasket maker on them. So of course you can just take a nice flat razor blade, carefully go along this area like this. Typically you'll end up being able to find all the RTV. Once you have all that scraped, we're going to continue on to removing the tube seals. Go ahead and carefully pull that out of there and set it aside. The next seal that we need to take out from the inside out would be the VVT solenoid gasket right here. I'm just going to use a 22 millimeter socket, slide it right over only the gasket, and then we'll carefully bonk it out. Once you have all your gaskets off of there, we're going to go ahead and clean down the valve cover. When I do this, I want to be very careful not to get any of my cleaning detergent inside of the PCV hose. Once you have the valve cover cleaned and as dry as it can be, we're going to continue on to installing our VVT solenoid gasket here. Now when we put this on, we essentially just want to line it up with the hole on the valve cover itself and then slide it down. After that, I'm just going to take a socket that fits directly over the outside aspect of this, and then we'll press it in. Now we can put in our tube seals. Just go ahead and line that up with where it needs to be and press it in. Now we can start putting on our valve cover gasket. There's going to be two different valve cover gaskets in your set. You, of course, want to make sure you have the one that lines up with the particular valve cover you're doing. Now that we have everything lined up, let's continue on by pressing everything in so it's completely situated. Now the next thing we have to do is take our pile of mounting bolts and we're going to remove all of our rubber mounting gaskets. Essentially, we want it to look like this when we're done. The next thing we have to do is put our gaskets on our mounting bolts here. To do that, you just carefully slide it right on over. There we are. And then do the same to the rest. All right, once you have the gaskets on the valve cover and on all the bolts, we're going to continue back over at the engine. You remember all those spots that we cleaned off on the engine where the valve cover sits? We need to continue on with a little bit of gasket maker right on that. I like to use high temp, and of course, it needs to be oil resistant. Just go ahead and put it right across that crack. Do the same to them all. There should be four on this valve cover. At this point, we're ready to put our valve cover on. Just be careful when we slide it over the VVT sensor. Once you have the cover on there and all of your bolt holes lined up, you can start putting in your bolts. We'll start them all in before we bottom any of them out. Okay, once you have all of your bolts started, the next thing we need to do is start snugging them up and then of course we'll torque them down. When we tighten these and torque them, it needs to be done in a specific order. Let's start with this one right here. Come all the way down to this far corner. Come to this one. Okay, now we can torque all these to 89 inch pounds in the same order that we just snugged them up. And of course, when you do the rear, the torque spec is going to be the same, but the sequence is going to be a little different. 
All right, now we can go ahead and secure our dipstick tube here. Let's get this back on here. Connect it in. Listen for a click, give it a tug. Connect in your VVT solenoid. Let's line these up and click them in. Let's start resecuring this coming down the line. Click that in there. Underneath here, there's another one that needs to slide down onto that stud. Right behind here, there's one. There we are. Make sure that's nice and secure. Slide in your ignition coils. Snug them up. Torque them to 62 inch pounds. Reconnect your wiring. Listen for that click, give it a tug. Resecure this. And then, of course, the wiring down along the bottom here as well. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is carefully remove this. Remember, it could potentially have dirt and debris on top of it, and we don't want it to fall into the engine. After that, we're going to go ahead and clean up this area, which is the mating surface, where our intake is going to sit on top of. Make sure you get off all of this crud. Now, once you have the engine cleaned up, the next thing you want to do is think about the gasket that goes from your intake to the engine itself. Typically, it's a good idea to go ahead and replace it. If you're not replacing it for some reason, you at least need to go ahead and remove it from the intake and inspect it. Make sure it's not dry rotted and cracked, and of course, make sure it's still soft and pliable. This one feels great. Aside from that, we're going to come over to this side over here, and that's right where your EGR valve is going to be riding. You want to make sure that this area is clean and free of any debris. So I'll go ahead and sand this down, and then we can start putting it onto the car. Let's carefully slide this in and underneath our fuel line here. We want to be very careful not to damage that. Bring this down, line up all of our bolt holes as we come down. Now we'll just start in all of the bolts before we snug any of them up. Okay, once you have all of your bolts started, we're going to continue on snugging these up and then of course torquing them to manufacturer specifications. When we tighten this, we need to go in a specific order. Now we can torque these to 89 inch pounds. Now that they're all torqued, let's continue on to the second stage, which essentially is turning these an extra 45 degrees. Start right here, quarter turn. Now let's connect this in, listen for a click, give it a tug. Slide this down on here, lock it in, give it a tug. Lock these in, connect in your throttle body, lock it in, plug in your map sensor, secure the wiring. Let's go ahead and slide this hose on here and then of course clamp it down. Let's get our EGR back on the bracket here. All right, that's snug. Got a little extra there, do the same to the other one. Torque this to 18 foot pounds. Now the next thing we need to do is put on our two mounting bolts that hold the bracket to the intake. Start them both in, then we'll snug them up. All right, we've got them both started. Now we're just gonna go ahead and tighten it and then give it a little extra. Now we've got our two screws for the upper part of the bracket here. Go ahead and start them in there and then snug them up. All right, that's nice and tight. Let's plug in the EGR. And then of course, make sure the wire's secure. Let's get this hose on here. Let's 
take this, click it in right there, slide the battery in here. Now let's grab our battery hold down, slide it right down in there. We'll check to make sure it's secure. Let's go ahead and reconnect our positive wire. We'll snug it up. Now we can get this in here. On the back side, there's two ears. You want to make sure that you slide those in and under. Bring it down, latch it in. Let's connect our hose up along here. Slide it right in. Tighten your clamp. Make sure that's secure. Let's connect this hose right along the back side there. Press it in, make sure it's secure. Now we're gonna do this hose. Reconnect in your mass airflow sensor. Listen for a click, give it a tug, make sure it's locked. Okay, at this point we can go ahead and reconnect our negative battery terminal. We'll snug that up as well, of course. Make sure that's nice and tight. Okay friends, so we got the engine all back together. What's left to do now? An oil change and then start it up and take it for a road test.